the M1 Mac Mini base spec versus the M4 Mac Mini base spec. Let's see how they compare. So I'm just opening up the default demo track in Ableton Live 12 Suite. And just sitting here with the track open, we have a 13% CPU usage average. And on the M1, on the M4, we have about 8% average, just having, just opening the program, letting it sit there. We are running the buffer size at 128 so a super low latency okay so let's play on each of them and playing the track we have about 20 percent on the m1 and we have about 10 percent 10 to 14 percent but what i'm wondering is we take all the tracks and we duplicate them. So we're at 60 tracks now. Let's keep going. Okay, M1 is thinking. Just even doing this duplication thing, the M4 way quicker at getting that done. I'm trying to duplicate 60 tracks into 120 tracks here. Okay, so now we have 120 tracks with all kinds of, you know, they're not just empty audio tracks. They have instruments, effects, all kinds of stuff. And the M1 is hovering right around 40% and the M4 is about 20%. So now let's play it on the M1. Okay, wow. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting 90%, 100% CPU. Um, average and the current wow a thousand percent for a second there just um it's a lot it's a lot okay let's go to the m4 okay we are getting about 40 percent average the current right around 60 percent yeah it's handling it just fine not overloading oh yeah there's that there's that spot <laughs> it jumped, but it's still holding good. The averages are good. Let's keep pushing this. So we're going to take our 120 tracks and we're going to duplicate again to 240 tracks here. That's what's next. And they're both... Okay, M4 is done. M1 still thinking about it. Oh, we got the spinning beach ball. Spinning... Beach ball, still waiting. I think uh, this might be it for the M1. <laughs> I don't know if it can handle 240 tracks here. It just might be too much. It might be too much for this little guy. Okay, it finally finished. And here, we're here we are just sitting here and we're already in the kind of danger zone at 80 something percent and we're in the 40s over here on the M4. So let's try and play this on the M1. 150, 170, 180. <laughs> Let's see if we can see the real time, the current. I mean, this is just, this is, this is rough. It's, uh, it's all glitchy. The frame rate, I can't even, barely even scroll. I would consider this unusable. You can, you're not, this is it. That's, I can't even stop it now. <laughs> I can't even, I can't even, I'm gonna have to force quit here. Okay, well, I'm waiting for that to stop on the M1. Let's try this on the M4, see if it can handle 240 tracks. Okay, so yeah, we're, uh, we're in the danger zone, but we're not at a hundred. Okay, we're at a hundred. We're at a hundred. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's still usable. Here's the thing, it's still usable. We're not getting a slow frame rate. I can still scroll around. I can still click on different tracks. You know, I can still, uh, I can still do stuff. Like everything's, you know, we can, we're, we're still able to use the program. Like it's all, it's all still here. Um, this is still usable on the M4. On the M1, I still can't get it to stop. I, it, the whole program's non-responsive right now. I'm trying to just stop it from playing. 
And it is a significant improvement on the M4. It's, it's able to handle a ridiculous, if you're using 240 tracks, um, that's impressive. Okay, so I think we can keep pushing the M4. Let's see if it can do 480 tracks. So here we go. Duplicate one more time. Pushing, we wanna push this M4 to its limit. I wanna see how much this thing can take. 480 tracks on the M4. Just having the application open, we're in the high 80s of the CPU usage. And let's see if we can play it. Let's see what happens if we click play. Okay, now we're, we're getting up there. This is, it's, it's getting up there. However, I'm still able to navigate and move around. There's a little bit of latency, yeah, but I can still kind of uh, operate things. Let's look at activity monitor. There's still, there's definitely some load, but this is this is less of a load on the CPU than the M1 with half the amount of tracks. The M4 is handling this like a champ. So yeah, so even with even with all of these tracks, we're still kind of able to Okay, it's it's a little laggy. I'm trying I'm just I'm noticing the latency here just with trying to do stuff maybe barely usable. It would be pretty pretty annoying to have to do a session with this much lag and glitchiness. This is where I would call it. I wouldn't push I wouldn't push any further. It can handle it somewhat well with um, you know, 2 480 tracks. It's a lot of tracks. There's a lot going on there. I am running live in both of these Macs in the native Apple Silicon support mode. I'm not using Rosetta. If you have an M1 and it's working fine for you, keep on using it. These are fantastic computers. As long as you're not reaching any limitations that, and not getting any major slowdowns or anything, just keep using it. It's good. However, if you're looking to upgrade, the M4 is offering a lot in this little little box. It is giving you kind of, it's really, it's kind of like when the M1 came out, the value that you were getting from this computer right when it came out in 2020 is kind of similar again now, four years later with the M4. I'll say I don't see why you need to spend several thousand dollars on a Mac Studio or a Mac Pro when you could buy this for $600 and it's everything you need to do all the recording and production you could ever want. This is everything you need. If you have an older Intel based Mac and you're looking to upgrade, 100% get the M4 Mac mini. You will not regret it. If you have an M1 and you're thinking about upgrading to the M4, it's kind of a toss up. I would say do it if you already are noticing slowdowns in Ableton Live. If you're noticing latency and sluggish performance, then it might be time to do the upgrade. Otherwise, if everything's running good, I would stick with the M1. It's, it's a good computer. It'll probably still be good for years to come. If you have an M2 or M3, you could also probably hold off with the M4 just because those are still really fast computers. The most important thing is to use what you have. You can buy all the fancy gear. You can get the fastest computer. You can get the nicest audio interface and the best studio monitors and the best microphones. But if you're not creating, if you're not doing something with these tools, because that's what they are at the end of the day, they are all tools. This is a tool, it's a piece of aluminum and plastic. There's no value in a tool unless you use it to create something. If the best gear is the gear that you have already. So I'm gonna try, and I hope you will too, to spend less time researching, less time looking at upgrading, less time thinking about purchasing new gear and more time using what I have, making music, writing, having fun, exploring, trying new things, trying new sounds, collaborating with other people. I wish you the best in your musical journey and remember to create every day or at least as often as you can.